Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be with you shortly. We're just waiting for a few more people to arrive. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be with you shortly. We're just waiting for a few more participants to arrive. It always takes a few minutes for everyone to load and come in. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're thrilled to be back. Uh, I guess the first one of the year, our tea at three on Wednesdays. And uh, every other Wednesday, so every other week, we uh, uh, have a webinar and we talk about one of our great destinations. Uh, but first of all, I need to do a little housekeeping uh, for uh, those that are on today. Uh, you'll be, uh, first of all, entered in a contest to win $500 towards your next vacation. So we'll be drawing for that in June. And so each week, if you, or each other, each other week that you join our, our uh, sessions, uh, you get another uh, ballot to be in our entry. If you have any questions, please type them in the question and answer box. We're going to add, uh, answer all of those at the end of our session. Uh, we're also recording this, and it'll be uploaded on our website under webinars at the top uh, bar. And uh, so you can listen to this as many times as you want. Send it to your friends or send your friends to our website uh, to, uh, to uh, review it. And uh, then you can also uh, mention to them that they may want to join us on Wednesdays as well. So uh, hopefully you have your cup of tea or your glass of wine or, or whatever you are having in the afternoon and uh, sit back and talk about one of my very favorite uh, destinations, going to Tennessee. And I have a, a friend I've known for quite some time, Amy Spear, who's uh, located down in Tennessee. She's our local rep down there that puts this package together. We love having someone on ground in destination. So she looks after all those details and makes it seamless for us when we arrive. So Amy, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Richard, and thank you to everyone being here today. We are so thrilled that Richard is planning to bring you all to Tennessee in 2023. We are looking at the fall and September of 2023, and we are, as I said, thrilled to be working with Richard on this itinerary. It features what we call all three grand regions of the state of Tennessee. That It starts in Memphis, which is in West Tennessee, and then we're going to travel to East Tennessee to the quaint mountain towns of Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and Sevierville in the heart of the Great Smoky Mountains. And then finally, it will end in Middle Tennessee in the home of Nashville or Music City, as we all locals call it. So, And, and as I said, Amy, it's one of my favorite states because of the variety. Everything looks very different from the Memphis area does. to the mountains and then back in the Nashville area. Just an absolutely beautiful state. And when I started my career 35 years ago, uh, hard to believe how fast the years have gone by. One of my... Uh, favorite tours to do uh, and in those days uh, everyone would needed to go to Nashville and, and we hope they all do again yeah uh, I would go at least two or three times a year down and be the tour manager from uh, Nova Scotia going down by motor coach doing all of that area and coming back to Nova Scotia but this particular trip we've decided to fly in mm -hmm. to allow us more than one or two nights in each city so we are really thrilled with this uh, destination I call it kind of the triple crown three beautiful properties and three beautiful locations. So um, we're looking so forward to being down there in Tennessee with you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for choosing to bring everybody here. So speaking of those uh, triple crown properties, we're going to, when you, when you arrive on your first day, you're going to arrive in Memphis and then you will check into the absolutely beautiful Elvis Presley's guest house at Graceland. So it is a hotel fit for a king. It's a new property. It is literally next door to Graceland, to Elvis's mansion and across the street from the Elvis entertainment complex. So you cannot well, beat the location. <laughs> and I have, I have a feeling that a lot of people have probably seen this hotel in some movies and such, because a lot of those uh, Christmas yes. movies that we all love have a yes. setting of this particular property. <laughs> it sure did. Yes, I just watched the uh, the one on Hallmark this year that was filmed there at Memphis. So with uh, with Nashville's famous uh, Kelly Pickler in it. So <laughs> and, and there's some is, yes, the beautiful guest rooms you can see. Obviously, everything is Elvis 
themed. My favorite thing about the property is that they actually have a movie theater on site that plays nonstop Elvis movies. So that will definitely get you in the mood to, to visit Memphis. So the first night when your group arrives, we're going to give you free time to just explore this property, enjoy the on-site restaurants, enjoy those Elvis movies. And of course, um, like I said, the, the great amenities that they have, they have, as Richard has here, the picture of the pool out back. It should still be warm towards the end of September, not hot, but warm. So. Oh, it'll be, it'll be lovely for us from Nova Scotia because we're leaving here on September the 16th. And, and that's always a nice month to, to still hear. It's still a nice month, but to be able to go down and enjoy all of this. And, and one of the things that we're always challenged on these itineraries is we like to show you as much as we can show you. You, but we also need to be cognizant that these properties are meant to be enjoyed as well. So that's why exactly. that first day, depending on our arrival, and I will say to everyone, the the uh, the pricing is going to be up uh, within the next day or so. I'm just working on it now, but of course the air will not be included at this point. So the price mm -hmm. you're going to see online uh, will be without air, and then when we can do air, which is about 11 months prior to us going, so the end of September, early October is what I'll, I'll get the actual group air quote for us, and that'll be added to the package. So that's when we'll learn when our arrival time will be, and all of those kind of things. So our goal this first day is to get oriented and comfortable and, and have a, a nice chance to enjoy this property. Exactly. And it is a beautiful property. So as you can see from these images, and of course, as part of your package as well, breakfast in Delta's kitchen, named for Elvis's mother, uh, will be included for all three mornings. And so you'll have a hearty Southern breakfast to start your morning, your three mornings in Memphis as well. well and I should, I should mention there, it's a great uh, segue, uh, Amy, is that this is a very inclusive package. I mean, it as is. you said, it's a very rich package from the perspective of what's included. We have breakfast included every day, and yeah. we also have dinner included almost every day. I think every day, in fact, in this package. And uh, even on, uh, on some occasions, uh, lunch is in there as well. So I said it's not an all-inclusive, but it's pretty, pretty inclusive. <laughs> it is. Yes, it's pretty close <laughs> to all-inclusive, right? <laughs> Exactly. Well, this photo right here that, that Richard has pulled up is one of the restaurants inside the guest house at Graceland. So you can see it is a lovely, lovely property. It's it's just a few years old and it is, it's every group's favorite property when they come to Memphis now. So we'll give you the first day to orient yourself to the property, enjoy those amenities. And then we're going to hit the ground running early the next morning. So day two, we're going to start with a Memphis city tour, a guided tour. So your step on guide your local Memphis guide will jump on your coach and will share with you the history of Memphis, including, most importantly, why Memphis is known as the home of the blues and the birthplace of rock and roll music. So um, one of our first stops on the city tour, you'll actually have a stop here at what's called Levitt Shell. This is an, obviously you can tell from the picture, an outdoor amphitheater, but most importantly, it's where Elvis gave his first concert. So you you can have a fabulous group photo right there on that stage where Elvis performed when he was, when he was a young man. And then uh, in our next slide here, this is St. Jude's, the Danny Thomas Pavilion. Um, we are hoping that by the time that your group comes in a year and a half, that St. Jude's that will be back open for tours. Right now, of course, you can imagine it's closed uh, to groups due to COVID. Um, the hospital, of course, will still be closed, but there's this is a wonderful, and this image is a wonderful uh, photo of the Danny Thomas Pavilion, which is a museum that groups can visit as part of their city tour, which shares the legacy of St. Jude's and just the amazing job that, that Danny Thomas and now his daughter Marlo Thomas have done in fighting childhood cancer and, and finding cures for childhood cancer because um, you'll, of course, learn on the tour, but, you know, no, no child, no family at St. Jude's pays for any of the treatment. It is all through donations and just an amazing, amazing legacy. So you can't, it, you would be remiss coming to Memphis without being able to experience that. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so here one of my favorite, one of my favorites. <laughs> 
iconic. You can uh, also you can't come to Memphis and not see the famous march of the Peabody Ducks. So, uh, for anyone listening that does not know what this is, this is the beautiful Peabody Hotel in downtown Memphis. And these little ducks right here in this picture, they live in the penthouse on top of the hotel. And every day, the duck master here in the picture with the red coat, he brings the ducks down the elevator and marches them straight into the fountain right behind him and they swim in the fountain for a few minutes and then march right back out and right back up that elevator <laughs> to their penthouse and they live much better than you or I probably live. <laughs> It's just, it's just amazing to see. It is uh, incredible. It sure is. So again, we'll have a stop there on the city tour. And then at the conclusion of the city tour, we'll stop here where this photo is, which is the iconic uh, Bill Street in downtown Memphis. And you will have lunch and free time to explore. We'll have a couple of hours of free time for lunch and then souvenir shopping uh, on, along Bill Street. And knowing a few of my people, they're, they're liable to make their way back down at night, you know? <laughs> Oh, My yes, we can, we can incorporate that after dinner one night. <laughs> And then after after free time exploring Bill Street, we will head to the iconic Sun Studio. This is the home of the Million Dollar Quartet. And you can see one of those pictures of one of the people in the Million Dollar Quartet peeking out of the lower right hand corner there out of that window. But that's Jerry Lee Lewis. He is the only living member still of the Million Dollar Quartet. But of course, as you all probably know, that also includes Carl Perkins, Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash and so this studio is where Elvis recorded the first 12 songs that we ever knew of him and it's still a working studio and so you'll have a guided tour it will share that the guides will share with you what the studio was like back in its heyday and then of course now and the current artists that are still coming like you too for example who want to come to Sun Studio and try to capture that same magic that Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis had on their records on modern records that we're hearing on the radio today. Well, such history and, and who doesn't love the Million Dollar Quartet? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And of course, you know, you can't come to the South and not eat. So we have a lot of opportunities, as Richard said, included in the package to, to uh, wine and dine in, in Tennessee. The first being Marlowe's. This is a rib joint, as we call it here in the South. It's been featured on diners, drive-ins and dives. It's, it's got um, three plus decades of um, food service. And this is where we're going to sample Memphis's famous ribs. So Memphis is always consistently voted the, the, the best barbecue in the country. And so you cannot come to Memphis and not sample the barbecue and see for yourself if you, in fact, think it's the best. <laughs> well, I've never been disappointed. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we didn't tell people that they're going to gain 10 pounds on their 10 days in, in Tennessee, did we? <laughs> That's what vacation is all about. Baby. Exactly, exactly. I'll try to make sure that it doesn't have too many calories in it, right? <laughs> Well, then, of course, on, our, on your third day of the trip or your second full day in Memphis, we will visit Elvis Presley's home, Graceland, and uh, your package is going to include the VIP tour, so you'll get to go to the mansion, as this group here in this photo is. You'll explore the mansion, and you'll also explore the new Elvis Entertainment Complex, which is across the street. You'll see Elvis's automobile museum with all of the cars that he had that he collected. You'll also get to experience the airplanes. And what I love here is in this photo, this is the, the museum portion that features all, many of his costumes, that, you know, all the famous jumpsuits and, and as you see the gold lame suit here and, the, and then um, there's a lot of all of the gold records. And um, so we'll spend about half a day at Graceland because you need it. <laughs> Well, and I, to me, having watched the, you know, over the years doing so many trips down uh, to Memphis to see the reaction of our guests, you know, of the big Elvis yes. fans, often we'll just peer and look over at the mansion and, you know, the hotel's not far from, from um, the mansion and, uh, and certainly um, when I was uh, going there in the early days, the museum was all part of the house out behind and then exactly. when the complex across the street came into play you have a lot more variety and a lot more choices and lots to do so it's an, uh, it doesn't take long for your time to pass when you're in Graceland. 
Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. And so then after your time at Graceland, we will visit Stax Museum of American Soul Music. So this is, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a hidden gem because people know about it, but it focuses on the soul music of Memphis, not so much the rock music that we'll have experienced at Graceland and at Sun. But what I love to tell people about Stax is my, my two favorite things at Stax. One is you get to go into the actual recording studio. It's not a recording recording studio today so people aren't coming there to record but it's it's strictly a museum but you get to go into the recording studio where one of my favorite soul songs was recorded which is Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay I mean that is just a classic hit recorded right there in that little unassuming building that you're seeing in the photo um, and then my other favorite thing is you can see Isaac Hayes's um, solid or his super fly Cadillac El Dorado <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so quite quite the way to ride in style that's for sure and then this evening you will go back to bill street as we mentioned and you will have dinner at blues city cafe this is a juke joint as we call them and you're gonna have what i call delta food the mississippi delta food and that'll include catfish you'll have the opportunity to have ribs again if you didn't get enough at marlowe's but there'll be catfish and shrimp and and more of a delta to meal so and then and then as Richard mentioned some free time to explore Bill Street in the evening when all of the juke joints are jumping with all the great live music well and, and, and to me when you're in Tennessee it doesn't matter where you're at the enter, local entertainment because everyone's aspiring to be a star so exactly I mean lots of times these are incredible entertainers that eventually become stars uh, you, you know you'll exactly there's so many great choices Exactly, exactly. So on day four, we will leave Memphis and leave uh, the, guest, the, the guest house at Graceland behind and we will travel towards East Tennessee. But en route, we will stop in the rolling hills of Middle Tennessee to visit Loretta Lynn's ranch. So we'll, we'll uh, leave the rock music behind for a little bit and then visit the Queen of Country Music's home, Loretta Lynn. She's still alive. She still uh, lives there part of the time at the ranch. She has several houses as, as many many famous people do but uh, this one is is just really beautiful and it well, it's, it's something well. else to see for sure and uh, it is. and butcher holler there I mean, exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes you can see all those iconic not just of loretta lynn but also of the movie coal miner's daughter of sissy spacek and and um you know you can see some of that memorabilia as well on site at loretta's ranch well it's one of the reasons why the rooting for this particular day is the the direction we're going we're just trying to decide which way to go but if we don't go this way we couldn't get Loretta Lynn's on the way to uh, Gatlinburg exactly. so we're bypassing Nashville today on the way to uh, Gatlinburg or I should say Pigeon Forge at this point or Sevierville yes. or Gatlinburg all all suburbs of one another now but it's exactly. an exciting day for sure it is. And so then at the end of the day, you'll arrive in the mountains of the, of the Great Smoky Mountains here in um, Sevierville, Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. And here's a beautiful photo of the mountains in Sevierville, Tennessee. We'll travel through Sevierville and then arrive in Pigeon Forge to check into your next iconic property or Triple Crown property. And now we, we've stayed with Elvis. Now we're going to stay with Dolly. <laughs> so I like to say you're going to enjoy the rhinestones, the sequins and the big hair with Dolly here at her brand new Dream More Resort and Spa. And it is one of my most favorite properties. My family goes and just stays there on our own. And we only live an hour away. <laughs> well, and I, ha and I haven't even, when I was the, there last, it was just about to open. So it hadn't opened oh. yet. And I mean, it's perfectly located right yeah. at the Dollywood. So exactly. Exactly. You can't beat the location, literally, as you said, at the entrance to Dollywood. And it is a full service property with many amenities in and of itself, just like um, just like guest house at Graceland. Here's uh, one of the guest uh, rooms. You can see all of them have beautiful mountain views because you're nowhere in the Smokies where you don't have a mountain view. So this evening will give you some free time to explore this beautiful property and the restaurants and the spa if you're so inclined and and just the mountain breathtaking mountain views just sit out there on the veranda right here in this picture and with a cocktail and just enjoy that beautiful view well it is it's just absolutely stunning and and um you know dollywood dollywood dolly parton is such a inspiration to people i mean she's just 
I mean, you could, yeah. couldn't fake it as long as she has. She's just <laughs> that warmth exactly. and, you know, I mean, one of my favorite concerts ever is when she was here and she didn't have any, um, you know, big, she played every instrument and she didn't have a lead in act. It was just set up on stage and talked to us all. And it was just uh, an absolutely amazing. And that's what this resort and this whole uh, theme park uh, really is all about. It's just a, a down home, warm, comfortable feeling. Exactly, exactly. Yes, Dollywood is consistently voted the friendliest theme park in the world. And so, and Dolly prides herself on that because I always say I think that's really Tennessee's greatest export is our Southern hospitality. So she certainly goes out of her way and all of her staff to continue that, that Southern brand, so to speak. So um, this photo is one of the restaurants on site. There are several. You will have um, breakfast every morning at the Hearth and Sun song restaurant which is phenomenal it is it is a breakfast bar here this is hearth and song right here and this breakfast buffet is i mean i have rarely seen a breakfast buffet this in inclusive i mean so you you if you if you leave there hungry that is your own fault <laughs> for sure but i mean just the the uh, the decor and everything is just beautiful it is, it is. And so on day five, we will hit the ground running again. Now this time in Pigeon Forge and we'll have a Life of Dolly Parton guided tour. So your guide will meet you there in the lobby of the Dream More Resort and board the coach. And you will spend about three hours touring all of the places that Dolly holds near and dear to her heart. And you'll learn about her philanthropy. And I always say she's kind of the patron saint of Tennessee. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, then, I mean, you're going to meet you're going to meet members of her family in the park. I mean, yes, <laughs> you'll you'll yes. read the name tags that they all wear. It's part yeah. and part and part, and there's no shortage of it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, and then after uh, the tour, after the guided tour, we'll have lunch and free time at one of the brand new shopping and entertainment meccas of Pigeon Forge. It's called the Island here at Pigeon Forge, and there's plenty of shopping and dining, as you can see right there on the left hand corner of the picture at Paula Dean's Family Kitchen. And then I have to point out on the right hand side of the picture, the log cabin looking structure. That is the old Smoky Moonshine Distillery. This was the very first ever legal moonshine that you can sample. So you must, uh, if you're so inclined, have a, a, a quick visit there for a moonshine tasting. It is actually the world's most visited distillery, Old Smoky Moonshine is. And so, um, um, and I always like. Well, to I remember out. when I was going there 35 years ago, Amy, to yeah. to uh, get to that whole area. Gallenberg was dry; like you had to make yes. sure you brought your drinks with you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. Um, so that that is very true. You had to know where to go. <laughs> Back in the mountain haulers, as we call them, the haulers exactly. where Dolly grew up. Uh, yeah, you had to know somebody who knew somebody to get anything there. <laughs> So then after free time at the island and lunch, you will travel to Dollywood and actually get to experience the world's friendliest theme park. So if you're so inclined, you can try one of the rides, but there's also wonderful uh, shopping. There's wonderful crafts. Dolly hires all of the artisans there to make all these beautiful mountain crafts like handcrafted dulcimers and um, all kinds of beautiful woodworking. And then also the shows, the shows the at shows Dollywood are second to none so um there is no shortage of entertainment and what we love about the dream more property there's a private entrance and a private trolley service all day long from dollywood so if some you know if, if the person you're traveling with is ready to go back they can easily get on the trolley and head right back to your room and uh enjoy dinner at, at the dream more resort or you can stay till the park ends and watch the fireworks and take the last trolley back if you're so inclined well that's one of the nice things about i mean it's a beautiful property you're not going to find better in the area but right. uh, to be right at the park gives you so much flexibility and that's what we like to do as a company is you know, rather be so far out and happen to find taxis or transportation yes. in once the driver can't drive this way, you're, you're not contained to anything. You can do what you want. Exactly. Exactly. So um, here in the, the next one of my ride, favorites is always the fun train. Yes, <laughs> yes, the Dollywood Express. It travels all around the park. So it is a, a wonderful train ride, about 30 minutes long. And then on day six, 
we will hit the ground running again with this time a guided tour of the Smoky Mountains National Park. So you'll meet your tour guide at the entrance to the park at what we call the Sugarlands Visitor Center and the guide will board your coach and you will have about three hours to explore America's most visited national park. And yes, this is the most visited national park over Yellowstone or any of Yosemite, any of the other iconic national parks. And you'll learn why. Uh, and you'll also new probably see gap some wildlife and, too. You've got a newfound gap where you can, you know, put yes. a foot in each state. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Go to the highest point in Tennessee, which is called Clingman's Dome. So um, we have, it's, it, and, you know, it's it, it would be sort of uncommon to have snow in September, but it has happened before. So we have several different routes uh, that we can go depending on what the weather looks like that day. So, and then at the conclusion of the city of the guided tour, you will have free time and lunch time in the quaint mountain community of Gatlinburg. So you'll get to experience Gatlinburg. And everyone will really enjoy the wandering around there for sure. Yes, yes. And then this evening of day six, you will get to enjoy the mountain food. We had the Delta food in Memphis. Now we're going to have the mountain food uh, at Applewood Farmhouse Grill. This is my personal favorite restaurant in all of Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Sevierville. Our family never goes to Gatlinburg without eating at the Applewood Farmhouse Grill. I have to point out my two favorite things in this picture. The one is the drink on the right-hand side. That's the apple julep. Everybody gets to sample that when they come. And then right behind the apple julep are the apple fritters and they are just phenomenal goodness and then in the basket next to that picture you can see uh the apple butter which is the fresh apple butter this is an apple orchard a restaurant set within an apple orchard and so we will have dinner and then we'll give you a little bit of free time because there's a fabulous apple winery for apple wine there's the candy shop for all the apple products the bakery so we'll definitely have a little free time before we then travel to our evening entertainment, which is the Country Tonight Show. As you can tell from this picture, it's a high energy show with performers of all ages, starting as young as eight years old, going all the way up in age. I won't tell you how old the oldest performers are because they wouldn't appreciate that. But <laughs> It's an amazing show. They do it an is amazing show. Musical variety of all different genres that are famous for Tennessee music. So a good reminder, three nights at the Dream World Resort and all of this stuff included. Exactly, exactly. And so then on day seven, we will leave the mountains behind and travel to Middle Tennessee, which is the Rolling Hills topography. But along the way, we are going to stop at what I call one of the best hidden gems in Tennessee, and that is Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. And people are probably going, why in the world do we want to stop at this state penitentiary? What in the world have Richard and Amy cooked up? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna I was gonna leave this as a surprise, but you know, Chris put it in the PowerPoint and I said, well, we'll share the surprise then. <laughs> okay, yeah. I won't, I won't spoil the whole story, but um, you, you are, in case anybody's scared, we're not going into a current penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> the, the state of Tennessee did build a new penitentiary that's a few miles down the road from this location. But what this is, um, a, a couple of years ago, a businessman from, from nearby Chattanooga, Tennessee, saw this great opportunity to turn this into a tourist attraction. So he bought the old uh, abandoned penitentiary and turned it into a fabulous attraction. Um, it is, um, it was, I should say, a maximum security prison. It's most famous, sadly, for being where James Earl Ray spent the largest uh, time incarcerated. If for you that don't know, James Earl Ray is who um, terribly um, murdered Martin Luther King Jr. But um, what makes this such a unique tour is that the tour guides that will be guiding your group are actually former inmates and former wardens of this penitentiary. So you get a firsthand experience unlike any other, you know, not like at Alcatraz where it's a national park ranger giving you the tour. This is people who really lived 
Brushy Mountain uh, State Penitentiary. The mountain behind you is really called Brushy Mountain. And um, we're not only are we going to have a tour, we're going to have lunch there at the warden's table, which is surprisingly, it's absolutely delicious. They do not serve you prison food. <laughs> they serve you gourmet food. So uh, we're not going to dine like the inmates dined uh, 30 years ago. We're going to have some really good food. And then for those of you that are brave enough, you can have another moonshine tasting. They do have an on-site moonshine, on moonshine distillery. And I just point that out because the water that they use to make this moonshine is actually coming from this photograph. There is a mountain stream trickling off that mountain where you see all the fog in the picture and that is the water that they use in that moonshine so very very unique and authentic <laughs> you know, a, you know we'll, leave the, we'll leave the rest of this as a little bit of a surprise but it's a nice way to break up the trip back to Nashville <laughs> exactly exactly so and then you're going to arrive in music city otherwise known as nashville you're going to check into your final and also just as lavish property which is the beautiful gaylord opryland resort you're going to have a three-night stay there. It is the largest non-casino hotel in North America. It is lavish, uh, nine acres of indoor gardens. And I want to point out, Richard, that you um, spared no expense for your passengers and you have reserved the beautiful atrium view rooms. So I just want to point that out because um, the, what, what I feel like you, we have the evening free for you to experience Opryland. And so what I feel like people are going to do is going to walk right through that guest room in this picture and go right to that private balcony that they have right there. So this is your view. view. <laughs> Well, one of the one of the views. I mean, to me, it's uh, yes. people get lost in this hotel. It's so large, and it's just yes. every every pavilion is a little bit uh, different. You know, from the Delta section to I mean, it's, they're, they're, it's just an absolutely it's a crime to not have time here. It's an attraction exactly. in itself. Exactly. When we package group trips here, the number one complaint that we get from groups is that you didn't give me enough time in Gaylord Opryland Resort. So that won't be the case with this trip because we have budgeted time. For well, you to and explore. being a shopper, I noticed Johnston and Murphy, a great shoe store. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. There's fabulous shopping and you have the evening to not only shop, but to dine. There's 14 luxurious restaurants, one of which is in this photo. That's the fancy Old Hickory Steakhouse. That's the highest dollar option. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, there's many, many restaurants and you'll, of course, get a list of them. All your passengers will get a list of them, of course. There's and if you're section. so inclined, there is an indoor water park that you can try. That's sound waves right here in this photo. And then, uh, but as I mentioned, there are nine acres of indoor gardens for you to stroll through. There are trails through the resort, through these beautiful gardens, these cascading waterfalls. And there's even a riverboat inside that you can take a little riverboat ride through one of the atriums called the Delta Atrium. So this right here, this photo that you're seeing, this is the Cascades Conservatory and also one of the best restaurants, which is the Cascades Restaurant. And this is where your group is going to have breakfast every morning right here. Well, I just big, love fancy to sit breakfast and watch buffet. people. Yes. Uh, sit on the Excellent benches and the walkways. It's just so lush and beautiful. It is. It sure. is. And it's always 72 degrees year round. So it could be pouring down the rain outside, but it's 72 degrees and sunny inside. <laughs> So also there's an optional activity for you to do the General Jackson Showboat this evening. And why we didn't include that uh, is, uh, once again, the itineraries get so full. And yes. this is something people might want to do or might not that, you know, once you're at the hotel, but, you know, certainly it's something that uh, will take uh, pre-reservations if anyone wants to do the General Jackson Showboat. Exactly. And it's a wonderful three hour cruise that leaves from Gaylord Opryland Resort and travels to downtown Nashville and then turns around right here where this photo is from, right in front of the beautiful, uh, what we call the Batman building, that building there on the left that looks like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually our uh, AT&T, the, the cell phone company. It is their, their uh, headquarters. So, But the boat will turn around there and then head back to Gaylord Opryland. It has a fantastic musical show called Music City Nights that you can enjoy with high energy performance that features all of the different genres of music that are famous, that Tennessee's famous for. Absolutely. 
And then the next day we will again hit the ground running. We're gonna have a Music City tour. But what makes this tour different from all the other guided tours that you've had uh, on the tour or that you may have had in general is that in Nashville, your tour guide is a singer songwriter who is trying to make it in the music business. So you will hear um, straight from the horse's mouth as we say here in the South, you'll hear what it's like to try to make it in Music Row as you're going down Music Row. And along the way, the songwriter will share some of their original songs that may turn out to be the next hit on the radio. You know, you never know your guide may be the next Garth Brooks in five years. <laughs> well, so, yeah, just just a fabulous, uh, fabulous uh, city and so much entertainment uh, for, for you to experience for sure. Exactly, exactly. And I love this photo. This is the Country Music Walk of Fame. So you'll pass by that on the tour. We also, uh, the next day, we'll give you a little bit of time to stroll through there. Um, we'll also on the city tour, see the Tennessee State Capitol. Nashville is Tennessee State Capitol. So you'll see the Capitol building and learn about the history of Nashville before it was Music City. We'll travel. Well, I mean, it's, you know, Bible standout in Nashville as well as music. <laughs> yes, we're the buckle of the Bible belt, as we like to say. <laughs> you know, we, our joke is that there are more churches in Nashville than there are Starbucks in New York City. <laughs> or Gaps. We used to say Gaps back when Gap was popular. <laughs> And then we'll have a stop here at the Bicentennial Mall State Park. This is a state park that um, opened in 1996, which was the 200th anniversary of Tennessee becoming a state. So we'll have a stop there. And then we'll also have a stop. We'll, we'll travel through Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt University. That is the Ivy League School of the South here, located in the heart of Nashville. And we'll also travel to Centennial Park. That is, um, in Centennial Park, there is a full-scale replica of the Greek Parthenon. And people always want to know why. And so you'll learn about why that is. But it's because before Nashville was Music City, it was known as the Athens of the South. And so you You'll learn about that on uh, on your city tour. I won't I won't spoil the the great stories, but um, but there are some great stories that your singer songwriter will share with you while also performing their hits along the way are soon to be hits. And then after the city tour, we will visit the Johnny Cash Museum. This is the largest collection of Johnny Cash memorabilia in the world, and so you'll get to see all about the Man in Black. So, and then attached to the Johnny Cash Museum is the Patsy Cline Museum. So you will learn about the queen of country music, Patsy Cline, and about her. One of my um, favorite singers of all time. I still can't, yeah. I, mean, I, still, I love Patsy Cline's music. There's music. just nobody like Patsy Cline. Nobody that's come along since Patsy Cline sounds like her. So um, you'll learn about her. And then across the street from the Cash and Cline Museum, as we call them, is the Goo Goo Shop. And the Goo Goo Shop, it, you must you must um, jaunt across the street there to sample the Goo Goo. The Goo Goo is America's very first combination candy bar. So it was invented in 1912. So I always like to joke that you know Reese's wouldn't have been invent wouldn't, wouldn't have come along maybe if we hadn't had the Goo Goo first. So um, and people always want to know what Goo Goo stands for and if it has anything to do with the Grand Old Opry because the initials are the same. It actually doesn't. It was just really, someone said it was just a bunch of goo in this copper kettle. <laughs> well, they, they, it, <laughs> they were always a huge sponsor at the Grand yes. Old Opry because of course, you know, people don't realize when they go to the Opry that it's a radio show initially exactly. and, and eventually became a TV show, but the commercials and everything are, are live. And so the Goo Goos were often mentioned. <laughs> exactly exactly yes and so then this evening of this tour of this day of on the tour you will have some hearty southern family style food at Paula Dean's Family Kitchen it just opened in Nashville um, this year actually so you'll be one of the first groups to eat there next year and it is absolutely delicious we would be very remiss uh, if, if we didn't bring you to Tennessee and feed you some fried chicken and biscuits <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, 
And then, as Richard mentioned, we're going to go to the Grand Ole Opry. It is the world's longest running live radio show. And again, Richard has splurged on fantastic seats for you on the main floor. So you'll be up close and personal with all of the artists. As you mentioned, it's a live radio show. So it is not the traditional concert format um, because each 30 minute spot, as we call them, is sponsored by a different vendor, such as Cracker Barrel or Dollar General or Goo Goo or sometimes life insurance, um, because the Grand Ole Opry actually started on WSM Radio, which was, um, a, and their first sponsor was a life insurance company. So that's why they still have insurance companies sponsoring them to this day. But on the Grand Ole Opry, you will see on any given night, anywhere from eight to 12 different performers. So, you know, my joke about that is that if you really like somebody, you know, if Vince Gill's on the Opry that night, you'll be so disappointed he only sang three songs. But if there's an artist you don't really like, you'll be glad they only sang three songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember my first time to the Opry, the big star that night uh, that was that came in and we were all so excited because I grew up on it was Roger Miller. He's singing King of the Road and the all King those of the songs. Road, and, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember Dottie West on another visit. And of course, she had all the regulars like Hank Snow and Skeeter Davis and Jeannie yes. C. Riley and all of the ones that were there on a regular basis. Now, a lot of them have since passed. So, right. I mean, they, it's a much younger uh, an audience, but you still get some old timers that show up. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So you have it's a good mix of the legends and then the new artists that are currently, you know, playing on the radio today. So That's a much more polite term, Amy, <laughs> legends rather than old timers. <laughs> That's uh, Nova Scotia. See, Hank Snow came from here. So there was always that, uh, that exactly. connection with Hank. And uh, one of the trips oh. I had, his first love on the tour with me, and he actually picked her up at the hotel, brought her to her house, and then took her to the Opry. She was backstage at the Opry. So uh, oh, that particular fun. time, my group just felt they were amongst a star. But we all oh, thought she yeah. was uh, pulling our leg, but it was, it was all real. He really did come. <laughs> That is amazing. What a great story. I uh, love over that. the years, there's just so many. I had another uh, trip where um, she was a nanny to the stars. She spent her life being a nanny at a lot of them. So when she came on our trip, a lot of the stars actually reached out and picked her up and whatever because she had raised their children. That is so cool. I love it. I love stories like that. Well, and speaking of Hank Snow, this is a great segue. So we'll start our last full day of the tour in uh, in Nashville at RCA Studio B, which is where Hank recorded I've Been Everywhere, which was his most famous hit. Mm -hmm. um, and nowadays, young people know it from the Southwest Airlines commercial because that's their, their theme song. <laughs> So Hank still getting those royalty airplays or his family, I should say, are getting their the royalty airplays from his recording recorded right here on this checkerboard floor in this picture at RCA Studio B. But um, RCA Studio B is if you had to ask me what my favorite attraction in Nashville is, it is RCA Studio B. Um, it is so magical because it is a, the home of over 1000 top 10 hits have been recorded right here. The, the studio looks just like it does in this picture, which is just like it looked in the 50s and it's recording heyday um, when the Everly Brothers were recording their hits there and Dolly Parton recorded I Will Always Love You there and Waylon Jennings started his recording career there and most famously, Elvis Presley. So you started your trip in Memphis visiting Sun Studio, which as I mentioned is where Elvis recorded the first 12 songs of his career, but he recorded all of the remaining 240 plus songs right here at RCA Studio B. And I love this picture that you picked for the PowerPoint, Richard, because this Steinway Grand Piano is the actual grand piano that was used on all of Elvis's recordings. And your group, if you sign up for this trip with Richard, will get to stand right there and have your picture made next to this grand piano. And it's so magical because I love to tell this story, um, even though you'll hear it again at Studio B, but it is 
So Elvis could play the piano. And so when he would come for his recordings, he would sit right there at that grand piano and he would warm up before they did any recording playing songs. And he would warm up specifically playing gospel songs. And the Jordanaires would gather right around that piano, right in that room where you're going to visit. And they would harmonize and sing and warm up before he recorded all these hits like Are You Lonesome Tonight? So you will get Just to stand a, oh, you're right there. You're getting me all excited <laughs> all over again. And I've been so many times, but it's one of my favorite, favorite trips to do. It is another it's great amazing. attraction. <laughs> yes. And after RCA Studio B, you'll travel just a couple of miles down Music Row to the Country Music Hall of Fame. And you will get to the Country Music Hall of Fame is the world's largest popular music museum. And we just like to joke about that because we're bigger actually than the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, um, but there's two and a half million artifacts in the Country Music Hall of Fame collection. And so you'll only get to see a handful of those um, when you're there. But this particular photo, this is the actual, what they call the rotunda, which is the actual Hall of Fame. And the, the placards on the wall in this picture, those are all of the people that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. So it is- And when you think of 35 experience. years ago when I was going, I mean, uh, the, the museum was located uh, all <laughs> spread out around town. You had to go to various venues and you'd start yes. off over by Barbara Mandrell's studio and all of that. Yes. And so to come to this beautiful complex, it's, uh, it is uh, stunning and, and just does a wonderful job. Yes, it's one city block long and one city block wide to give you an idea of just how massive it, it is. So, um, and then after you have your self-guided tour, you'll have lunch on your own in downtown Nashville and some souvenir shopping time. And then we'll travel here to the Ryman Auditorium, which is the former home of the Grand Ole Opry and also known as the Mother Church of Country Music. It is second only to the Mormon Tabernacle in terms of acoustics. So it is a spectacular venue you you'll have a self-guided tour there where you'll get to stand on the stage where people like Patsy Cline and Johnny Cash and Hank Snow and all these people that we've been learning about on the tour where they actually stood when they performed during that the heyday of the Grand Ole Opry and so and so happy to see it saved because when I was first going you could look out through the roof in numerous places you know it was yes. it was not in good condition and so to see it today and the last time I went we actually got to go to the Opry at the Ryman because we went during the the uh, CMA awards oh, and uh, yes. everything else was going on. So we ended up having to, uh, do, or they had moved the, or no, that was the, that was a different trip. That was a trip before the, the last one that we, um, you know, had the, we had the, um, the Grand Ole Opry actually back at the original home. So that was kind of a neat experience too. Yes, it is. And so um, my, my uh, your farewell dinner event is my most favorite event. I say this is the most authentic experience that Nashville can offer you. And I just want to point out too, to, to our to our viewers that this is something you can only get if you come through Atlantic Tours with Richard. This is not something that if you traveled to Nashville, you could get on your own. This is a private show just done for Atlantic Tours. It is um, a private show with one of Nashville's top songs songwriters and he is going to share the stories behind his famous hits and the inspiration you know what was going on in his life that inspired these classics that you've heard different performers perform and I always say you know people um, people coming to Nashville get excited to see a celebrity walking down the street but us locals get excited to see people like the gentleman right here this is Brian White a, a songwriter famous songwriter and I get more goosebumpy to meet him and because I know that he's written all these top hits you know for all of these these people that have you know made their careers so to speak and so we have a, a private dinner and then he's going to perform for you and share that inspiration and then at the end of the show, there'll be time for question and answers and autographs and, and uh, CD signings if you want a, want a CD and all of that. So you'll get to shake hands with a local celebrity. <laughs> well, and thank you, Amy, for, for including this because, you know, you've often heard me talk when I'm up on stage at some of the conferences and such. One of my favorite things by chance is I was invited to go to the Bluebird Cafe. Yes. And uh, the night that I was invited as a guest of someone's, because it's a very small venue, it was yes. a songwriter's circle. There was four songwriters, and between the four of them, they had 
I don't know, 30, 40 number one hits yes. and to hear the inspiration behind those. And, and, you know, when you do groups, you really don't have the option of the Bluebird Cafe because it's too small exactly. and it's not something yes. you can do. And I said, if we could incorporate something like that into our tour, it would be yes. an amazing uh, thing for us uh, to be able to do. So I'm thrilled to have this experience uh, in our finale uh, night there. And uh, so it, it'll be a great experience. Absolutely. There's nothing more only in Nashville than this experience. So it will definitely give everyone a wonderful experience and leave you with a lot of musical memories of Tennessee. So it that, is. And then when the next day, we're going to have to say goodbye and leave. fly home. I know. Uh, but uh, like I said, to me, it's a, it's the, it's the dream trip that I've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, and so finally, um, it'll be hosted by myself. And, uh, and so to me, I'll be going along with you to enjoy, um, you know, when I first got into this business, uh, will soon be 36 years, but 35 years ago, um, you know, doing these kind of trips, it's one of the things I've always wanted to go back and, and do again and do it in a different way than traditional motor coach down and back to allow us those multiple nights stay. So thank you so much, Amy, uh, for thank doing you. this today and, uh, and to have you on the ground as our representative there. Um, I don't know if anyone noticed Amy's accent today. You know. <laughs> <'Cause> I'm really <laughs> from Tennessee. Did y'all notice that? <laughs> And you'll find lots of the varying accents, but they do change as you go around the state and, yes. and depending on where you're from. And, and so to me, it's just such a warm and friendly thought that brings a smile to my face every time I think of, of Nashville. Let's see if we have any, any questions from anyone, because uh, we've gone about 50 minutes. So we're in the range where, you know, where I want it to be today. And I see some chatting going on, but I'm not sure there's any questions. Uh, Let's just see what the chats, uh, they're just back and forth about uh, how beautiful the sights are there. And uh, I guess we must have covered everything because no one has any questions. But I do want to remind everyone that we are open for reservations now. The pricing will be uh, completed uh, in the next day or so. This is recorded. And um, the other thing is uh, we still have the reduced deposit on through the month of February, where to put your name down and secure your seat, you just need to pay $50. <laughs> So it's a $50 deposit to secure yourself a spot on this trip. Uh, the next deposit won't be due until we do air, which would be probably October of this year, because it's about 11 months prior that we can actually secure air. And then the uh, final payment will not be required until about 120 days prior to us going. So um, if this is on your dream list, uh, um, COVID should long be gone by 23, and, uh, and this is going to be an amazing itinerary. We're going to have fun together, and we've got all the resources we need on the ground right in Tennessee with Amy and uh, her uh, partner and, and uh, staff, so they'll look after everything for us. So once again, Amy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so uh, I guess I should move to the next slide here. To, uh, to show you the full itinerary and uh, the, uh, the 10 days. As you can see here, lots of B's and D's, breakfast included every day and uh, dinners throughout the entire trip. So you'll know what you're paying before you go. There won't be any shock value unless you do a lot of souvenir shopping. And September uh, 16th of 2023. And uh, then the next uh, webinar We'll be talking about uh, those that want to stay home in this year and not go too far away to beautiful uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, I always refer to it to uh, our folks in the U.S. and other spots as the Alaska of the East with their icebergs and our whales and puffins. So we'll be covering that on February 16th, once, once again at 3 p.m. Remember, every webinar you watch is another chance for you to win $500 towards your vacation. That'll be drawn in, uh, in June. And uh, as I said, these are all recorded. Upcoming ones beyond uh, the February 16th, March 2nd, we're going to talk about beautiful Quebec City and the Gaspé Peninsula and then experience our own country, Canada by rail, uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast, all uh, by rail. Again, Amy, thank you. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you sometime soon in person because it's been a couple of years since we've seen one another for a hug and a beverage and a catch up. So uh, thank you again. Thank you so much. And thank you all for hopefully visiting Tennessee next year. Yeah. Yes.